Here we have a Scott Foil 10 Aldurace. Yeah, that's right. Full race bike of old. Well, not too old. It's 10 speed, not too bad. So the question is, if one of these are just kicking around and either get gifted or whatever, what does high end look like? Yeah, it kind of looks like this, but you know, cleaner. Let's do my magic and let's see what we have. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. I'm taking scary out of used bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy, and this is this old bike series. Well, today we got something special, and it's one of those situations where, you know, every mechanic that's ever been out there loves to work on high-end stuff. Uh, it's just one of those things that in your shop, I came in a mom-pop shop, and it's one of those deals when somebody does a special order on a, a top-of-the-line road bike or a mountain bike, it was like the ooh and ah, the whole shop in the back. Well... This is one of those bikes that you definitely got some ooh and ah in the back room, uh, especially in a smaller shop where you didn't see a lot of these go through. And unfortunately, in my scenario, I refurbish a lot of road bikes, so I deal with a lot of Altegra and some Durace a lot more than I did back in the day because, you know, unfortunately those bikes at that point um, new were still expensive in the 90s even compared to relation today, which now they're obscenely expensive. Uh, you're talking five, six, ten grand. And then, you know, to get that ooh factor, you got to at least have ten grand, you know, sitting in your stand, right? That's just ridiculous. But hey, let's go back in time a little bit. Not too far. Actually, this is, you know, within the last decade or so. So anyway, let's take a peek at this gym. So what we got here is a Scott Foil 10. All carbon frame, all Durace with uh, Mavic. Well, I do that, take that back. It has Altegra hubs with Mavic Open Pro rims, which is still pretty decent, honestly. Um, I do have a set of Durace hubs with the same rim, which I'm gonna check and see if it's something I wanna swap out to make it more matchy-matchy. But other than that, it still matches, right? You know, you're talking about both shifters or Durace. I mean, and the brakes are both Durace front and rear, the front and rear derailleur, the match and the models, the crank set as well. Where well, you'd see a lot of those OEM bikes that would kind of some smitch and switched out some of those parts to cut down on costs. Costs were no expense on this particular bike when it was new. I've been seeing these on the newer uh, front, oh, man, upwards to like two grand in the used market. Uh, not this is going to go that uh, for me, uh, for what I do and what I'm trying to shoot for. But this is one of those bikes that kind of took a limb on, a leap of faith. But also keep in mind when you're looking at high end, it can go either two ways. It could be a high end, some of this recreational rider that doesn't put a ton of miles on it, or as a very aggressive rider. Also, high end does hit the the race market. And that race market is hard on bikes. It all depends what kind of racer too. Is it like a semi-pro racer where they burn through a lot of chains, cassettes, and they're on the bike three or four hours a day, that kind of thing? Or is it a racer, just a novice racer that races weekend warrior on the weekends, right? You know, it goes up, does those races, right? Um, so that being said, not sure. It is a smaller frame, so it's not going to be a, a bigger person to put a lot of strain on the bike, but nah, you know, don't, don't underestimate those little, little or sh shorter individuals. They, they can they, they can pull a punch. Um, they have a lot of power to them too sometimes. So um, anywho, we're going to just dive into this and see what we got. Um, pardon the interruption, there is more. More you say? Push the more button. Push it. 
push it. I dare you to push it. Once you push that button, you get more details about the video you are watching in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop as well as suggestion for improving your ride. In addition to, to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community, also links to other social media accounts as well as my website to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry. Other videos linked below, extend your cycling experience here on YouTube. And now back to your original programming. I mean, it, it looks like it's pretty, pretty good. The thing is, it's been sitting and sitting a long time. So what I'm assuming would probably happen, I don't really know the story on this bike too much. Um, it seems to me that they are avid riders. Maybe some, you know, a triathlon here or a race there type individuals, but nothing of the immediate level that they're, you know, semi-pro kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it looks like they definitely have upgraded to another bike. You know, this is just one of many in their stable. And you can find buyers or sellers out there that are doing that, which is, you know, which is kind of nice because you'll sometimes will find a good, whew, a good gym out there. And uh, if they ride multiple bikes, sometimes they don't uh, tear up the one, you know, one and only kind of thing, burn them and turn them. So what we're looking at here is a, a bike that was many of bikes of theirs. So that's kind of nice to know because that kind of distributes that the the riding on them. So it become a little bit more of a uh, more of an easier refurbish without a, a pretty big lift on it. But you know, needless to say there's there's probably some hidden hidden scaries in here that we have to still check regardless if it's up or in or not regardless if somebody lists it and says it's all fine-tuned and ready to go they didn't do that on this one but i've had seen bikes like this and like you kidding me really no it's it's not but um looking at a first glance as these particular wheels even though they're probably not oem or match um, they don't seem like they've had a lot of life to them. Also, the tires still have the nubs on them. So the question lies is, did they just swap out the wheels and took maybe nicer wheels off of this one and took it off another bike? I don't know. But, you know, at least the skewers match, and that's all I'm happy with, right? It's missing some bars in the saddle, but I got a pile of those to rummage through to see if I can get something that's quite, you know, nice to match match to be similar. Mm -hmm. But let's see. Let's go into this. I did notice right off the bat though, it is all internal routing and with the Scott, I am not that familiar with the Scott internal routing. So I will be very, very careful uh, while disassembling this bike and making sure I get those sleeves in the proper areas so I can restring the cables with minimal um, torture, <laughs> let's just say, because if you drop a cable in something that it's not easy to restring, um, there you lies a huge, a huge problem. So what I'm doing is taking the cassette ring off by using a chain whip and a lock remover, but got to use leverage. So excuse my absence. <sighs> so once I spin that loose, it pops. So we're going to be the detectives on this and kind of determine so this is an Altegra cassette. So I'm I'm more leaning towards this wheel set actually came from a different bike, um, which is fine. You know, people do that as long as they, they match and the tires seem to be good. These Altegra hubs are still super smooth and the rim well still has a lot of meat on it. Actually, you can see the machining still. That has not been worn down. So if you haven't seen it on the rear, it looks really good. That means it's really pretty good. Um, the front, I'll just take this off real quick. They must have just threw it on there because the skewer's on the wrong side. Or they may not know, but... So, same machining. Hub's pretty smooth. And obviously I wash these wheels in the tank and also when I trim them and polish them, I will definitely be inspecting. Uh, these were really known as workhorse wheels and this actually could have been just training wheels. Um, for example, 
the Altegra hubs, but the Open Pro Mavic rims, we did a lot of custom lacing back in the day of these. You know, that's a very strong workhorse rim, and then you can manipulate what kind of spoke uh, thicknesses and using alloy nipples and so forth. Uh, but the tire looks really good on that as well. Uh, so let's take a peek here and see if the chain has a power link or master link or quick link, which does not look like it. And then, then what I do is I look for the drive pin on this. Yeah, it's right there. Um, Shimano uses a, used to use, I don't know if they do anymore, uh, a drive pin, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, because you have to have these special pins and it costs a few bucks each. But more of the hassle is you got to buy them. They just kind of like look like a little bullet that pushes through um, the chain when you replace it. I understand the performance factor of it, but the convenience factor is just not there. Uh, reason being is those particular pins that push through if you don't do them right not use the right uh, chain tool they'll break on you then you're like oh, blowing 20 yeah you know, some money out the door just trying to get the chain on there that's why i'm really in the camp of the quick link power link um whatever you want to call them whatever brand it is to do that um i believe this chain is stretched on this guy so i'm just going to replace it anyway but i will keep it um aside for measuring reasons uh, just to double check, but I will double, oh, it'll string it through again. So, getting down to the lower portion of this, let's see. Um, <coughs> yeah, even the brake is internally routed. So, my end game on this is, you know, I've, obviously I hope the frame is, is good but we don't know until I get it stripped down and start polishing it and cleaning it. And by doing that, I'm gonna to have to replace these cables, which, and again, I gotta be very careful not to drop any of them in the frame. I mean, granted, the newer frames, they've done some, you know, better prep to make sure you can restring it, but I'm not gonna take a chance on this one that so, I, because I <laughs> haven't had that much experience. So I'll definitely be keeping these. Ugh. Housing, okay, that's nice. This one actually has a, um, a bumper for the housing to fit into. It fits into the frame. And you see there's like a little bit of rust in there. So yeah, I definitely want to replace the cables and the housing. Also, older housing will start cracking um, that's kind of just a, a breakdown, a fail point. So as a mechanic, that's something I want to uh, replace as well. And this guy has the same kind of thing. You got a little rust in there. So, so the rear derailleur housing, this is where all the gunk kicks up and a lot of water. And that's where it can draw inside this. I've replaced only this little piece of housing on several bikes before doing just uh, service work and it eliminates the shifting issue. I mean, I'll spend like a, a 30 minutes of trying to figure out, oh, I definitely need that back. Um, uh, 30 minutes like trying to figure out the shifting on that. And it's like, oh, maybe I just replace the housing and it just binds up in there. So you place that little piece of housing and the cable, I mean, if you clean these, a lot of them you can clean. A lot of them are just stainless steel and you just need to take a little bit of steel wool to clean them back up and the cable's fine. And when they say when the cables stretch, it's not the cables that stretch, it's actually the housing compressing. So it makes the cable seem like it's getting longer. It isn't. Um, so that's one of those misnomer things out there. That want to clarify if you're just hanging out to learn a little tidbits. There's a gold nugget right there. All right. Uh, so looking at this, this is kind of cool because this is you know checking out a different carbon frame. I'm very you know, very familiar with the the Trek and the specialized carbons, but the Scott I never worked in the Scott dealer before, so I didn't get to see these new. Obviously, I've seen the parts now um, from Durace and the wheels, of course, too. So this has a little bit of, oop, get that piece of housing back. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm going to scrape off the EU 
of the jockey pulleys. Um, it's just build up uh, Teflon from the dry, uh, dry lubes and the dry lube is a liquid, which is kind of a, you know, counterintuitive thought, but when it dries, it just leaves this Teflon film and uh, that will build up sometimes. So when you're looking at uh, Finish Line or some of those other brands out there, so you need to scrape that off to help the ultrasonic cleaner do its magic um, and cleaning those out. Or you can disassemble it completely and you know take the jockey pulleys off and clean them and clean off the bearings too. So anyway, I'm in one of those camps that the ultrasonic cleaner does really wonders. And also ultrasonic cleaner, you want to be careful on these finishes. Um, yeah, this one doesn't have that coating. It's more of like a, it's not a power coat, it's kind of etched. So this is going to be fine. But sometimes with a high temperature, it'll peel that uh, finish off so you want to be careful um, I only do five minute increments and most of the time my liquid is at room temperature but if I refresh I use hot and then I'm really kind of like check it a couple minutes when it's in there just to get the clean clean going really um, but I don't want to you know damage the finish either I've cleaned these uh, parts before an ultrasonic cleaner that's why I use the dilution of uh, Simple Green is the brand I use. It's like one to seven or one to ten ratio. Um, so mostly water, and that seems to cut down on the discoloring or anything of that nature. If you do it straight, I only use it straight on the chain cassette uh, to really get the booger gunk off. But other than that, I use a diluted. I mean, I'd rather run it a couple times extra if need be. <clears throat> then risk damaging the finish of the parts, that kind of deal. So, got the rear brake, rear derailleur off. This is a Brazon front. So I'll take this guy off. And you know, <laughs> you ever watch mechanics working in the service? or working and building bikes, when you get a nicer bike, they take their time. <laughs> There's a reason being they're like, I wanna really check this out um, and enjoy this. But sometimes we get a string of bikes that are just rough and having to deal with those. Sometimes, you know, a challenge. And when you get something nice like this, you, uh, you like to take your time. So this is a, oh, which one is this, the BB? It's not stamped which one it is, but it's one of those press bearing guys, which might be a scary no-no. Because those press uh, fit bearings, um, some like truck for a while, they had them press fit right into the carbon, which, which is kind of not great design and the bearing is steel and they put it into a carbon you know bottom bracket and that carbon will break down a little bit around that uh that uh, uh bob man bearing and what happens there is it waddles out, so when you pull the bearing out or the crank off like this, the bearing goes bleep, right on the floor, and you're like, that's not good. So this actually has a uh, tool contact sleeve, and both bearings feel really smooth. Oh boy, lucked out there, um, because you know press fits, and I would have to figure out what's going on. Uh, the chain ring looks, I mean, it's been used it's dirty, you know, 10 speed, 3953. I'm um, on 165 cranks. This is a pretty tall chain ring to be pushing for um, that, usually a small ride. That's where you look at the 50 teeth, is kind of nice um, for small riders, but this is definitely um, very serviceable and clean. These are not the ones that are part of the recall, it's, it's uh, 
Oh, they didn't have, that's on 11 speed one. So plus it's not as hollowed out as the hollow tech. So we'll give that a good rinse there and look, see, and also, whew, I'm gonna have to use a longer one on this guy to get in there. Deep frame well for the brake. It's not a problem, it's just, it's different. This one did have a really short steer tube. Not that I've seen any, any stack on this guy. So it's definitely a professional fitting setting. I am not really sure if that's something that was done at the shop when a build. So Cervelo is one of those and working in a shop we had Cervelo. And basically it's designed to be fitted and then the build is completed after the fit. So it's kind of weird because you'd have like these bikes look like they were half done on the floor, but that's what they were because everything was longer and, and you're supposed to cut it down once you do the fitting. So keep in mind, we're looking at a Cervelo, you may have one of those uh, with a seat post or a stem being cut short, but I'm not sure if the Scots were in the same camp as that. But I will definitely do a little look on that. But I have to deal with what I work with what I have. So we're just gonna ooh, don't drop in there. I don't want you to drop in there. So okay, I'm going to dress this right of that. Okay, I have these uh, sleeves and I use them. I put them on the cables to hold them in place, so I don't lose track of them. I'm gonna just go ahead and put the sleeve on the brake right of the bat so I don't drop it or lose it in there. This is something I don't want to be trying to thread later and see how it just kind of slides right in there. Then what I do to hold it in place, take a piece of, uh, I just use uh, painter's tape and squish it over the sleeve and I can work around the sleeve to do my detailing but that keeps it from you know you got to be careful still but it keeps it from sliding out so that way I mean these these are loose so they're going to want to pull through because of the weight of the shifters I'm not saying the shifters are super heavy then looking at that brake again this is what we got got a little bumper here sleeve which is kind of nice um, but yeah, don't lose these because these are prioritary to the frame. <laughs> yeah, I better not lose these. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll be doing some, uh, um, interesting. Ooh, that's interesting. See this little button here? Do a little close up. This little button is a chain guide and keeps the chain from sliding into the, the shifter in there. That's kind of interesting build. I have not seen that before. That's standard, that kind of thing. Um, the cables have a little port underneath here, but very, very small. So that's where I'm going to have to really kind of figure the sleeve thing, especially for, well, for both of them, front and rear shifter. So that's something I have to be very conscientious of. Um, so what I could do, uh, since I know I'm replacing the shifter cables on this guy, um, I'll cut them at the shifter themselves here so they don't pull through and the weight of the shifter so got that and pull us back that's the other shifter it's the front brake housing and cut it here there we go Hopefully it's not too short that I can't pull that through, which I may be a problem. This is uh, anything I figured out. So these cables are really hard to figure out. Okay, because you have to kind of dig for where that... Okay, so on this one, this guy... Pulls, pushes through here. That's how you get the derailleur cable out. Boop. And that's how you thread it back through. 
Uh, highly recommended not reusing a cable that can fray. The new cables have like a soldered end to them, so you can use that to punch through some weird angles. A little gold nugget there, but sometimes you'll take the rear front, the rear cable and swap it to the front and do a rotation. On these, I just use new cables back, no, front and back, like right off the bat, that kind of thing. Okay, so these guys. Ooh, oh yeah, I got some nasty, rusty stuff in there. So it looks like this plug here is the actual housing stop with this guy. That's interesting. So that's something different. Well, let me slide out too. Try to make sure that cable stays in there. Oh boy, that actually, that cable is rusted. I'm not gonna pull it out because I needed to keep it in there. But that's actually seen a lot of U, U factor going on there. Um, hmm. Okay, so I got the remainder of cables in there and they're still in place. So don't want to drop those because it gets really tricky underneath here. So I'm going to do a cleaning of the frame right now and see if we can um, ensure that it's okay to start with anyway, because, you know, I polish these and this is just the first, the first wave, which usually if there's a problem, that's when I'll find it, but not all the time. What I'm looking, feeling for, I'm actually feeling, is like any kind of irregularities in the frame as I'm cleaning it. Using this little, I use uh, purple power diluted half and half with water. And uh, that seems to clean the surface of the frame really good before I start using the polishing compounds and de scratchers and all that. I did notice there's some rubbish to the frame and it's probably from a bike rack. That's what a bike rack would probably rub up against. I don't see any reason it would be a bag or anything there to cause that or a rack, that kind of thing. And this is kind of a bike that you want to put a rack on anyway, which I've seen people do, which is kind of a big mistake because you don't want to clamp carbon if it's not designed to take the load. And these don't have brazon bosses where you mount something. So this is strictly just for riding on the road. And if you want to carry stuff, get a backpack. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't be weighing down that carbon in places where it can have a fail point. Um, I've seen frames where they put a, like those kickstands, which I think happened in one of the frames that I have. They crush the back with the kickstand which is kind of a sad bummer find. But anywho, see if I can repair that at some point. But at this point, I'm just moving on. So this has an interesting kind of little dip to it. It looks like it's from the manufacturer um, to the carbon, how they, the frame kind of lays. So that's the only thing I've seen so far. There's no scrapage or cuts into the paint around the chain ring, which is nice because sometimes the chain ring will drop in that crank and scar up. And they, you know, it's usually beefed up. You don't have to worry about it too much, but it keeps it from being ugly. And I've not seen anything so far. All right, let's look at this head tube. And be careful not to pull the cables out while I'm doing this. Inspect that fork. There's a lot of dust on this, like, and I think I'll take this fork um, out and the, and the headset and inspect the bearings too. Looking at all that uh, rust around the cables means there's it's seen a lot of water. So probably not indigenous to Colorado. It's probably came from somewhere where it was a little more humid and more rain. Portland or something of that nature. And that's where carbon bikes are really nice for those areas because carbon doesn't corrode. And aluminum, you know, it doesn't corrode either, but it's a stiff material. So sometimes it's not as fun to ride or as forgiving. Okay, that's this side. Let's take a peek at the other side. Ooh, that is light, like nothing. 
Alright. Okay. Getting to the other side. Whew, this is pretty. I think this little polish pulling. I'm not seeing any major, only for that one scarring right there. I have not seen any other real major scarring. And even that's not too scary for me anyway. I don't see any hairline cracks or any of that nature. Well, it only takes one little area to be like, oh, bummer. But not finding that yet. All right, let's uh, tilt this up. See the bottom scary. This is where all the hidden parts are. I mean, some scratches that need to definitely need to be buffed. But I'm not seeing anything that's damaged or repaired as of yet. Anyway, oh, I can't twist that. This is a little bladed. Don't do that. All right. Well, serial number is intact. These are made in Taiwan, which is probably in the same plip boat facility as the Trek and Specialized Rita. All right. I think first swipe at this. I mean, some scuffage and those need to be just buffed out. Some dirty areas, but I don't think anything's been compromised. So, hey, I think we're good. So, I'm going to continue to clean the parts, chew the wheels, see what I need to do there. Um, definitely going to replace all the cables and housing on this guy. And the chain, brake pads, I think seem to be pretty good shape um, so they're either been replaced or not used too much and uh, yeah double check these bolts that kind of thing and also I'm going to check the C post here and see if it, it's at, at its whole length um, if it's cut or missing the height limit line that means it's been cut so that might throw me for a wrench for a loop is this seems really really short uh, front but I will inspect those bearings but it is Richie headset stem and seat post so that's all good stuff um and the wheels i'll debate if i'm going to put the durace ones on there or not i might uh just because and why not and uh this is might be one excellent gym and hey if somebody's just looking for that one up step up as into a little bit nicer bike um, from maybe they just got something just to start in riding and they're like, okay, I'm really getting into it. And I want to do some either competitive, competitive riding or some speed. Um, this is definitely something huh. HMX carbon. That's, I'm just looking at the decals, that kind of thing. Just kind of, ooh, nah, get a little drool on there. Oh, sorry about the slobber. Okay. Onto the, onto the, um, cleaning the parts we'll, we'll review this in a second here we'll see what we have so here we have it man get a good close-up on this paint it actually turned out really nice and I didn't drop any cables yet so that's a good good indication there but and the only blemish I see is this guy which is just something rubbed the paint to the carbon which you know it's such a lot of material here. I don't think it's going to be any kind of compromising question of that. But looking at the rest of the bike, there's only a few little scratches on the frame. Not much at all, any. So let's see if we can flip this out to the back side. So yeah, looking at this, definitely immaculate very clean for sure and there's only like a little scratch here other than that it's pretty stellar huh let's check a look at the parts so looking how everything cleaned up beautifully chain rings shifters gonna need a chain on that 
Tech set and the wheels decided to stick with Altegra Open Pros. They're much nicer, better condition wheel set than the Durace I have, believe it or not. And this will actually be a better fit for this frame. So yeah, yeah let's review and recap. And there we have it, you know. Um, it's one of those things when you look at a bike and it's like all pieced out kind of like that and in addition to situations where it's all dirty and you see a little rust here and there. The frame came out immaculate and being carbon, the bearings are good. So that is all just a win-win and the componentry, I mean, doesn't look like it's too much wear. Yeah, the chain was stretched a little bit, but not too much. And the wheels, those wheels are pretty much in new condition. They were a little bit out of true, but I was able to true those up just good. So, you know, you, you don't always find diamonds or rubies in a rough like this in the sense, especially with the high end parts. And well, I'm not done yet, but I'm pretty sure about 98% confidence that this will go back together. The only thing that's gonna trip me up is the cable routing here a little bit. Um, so I just have to make sure I'm well rested and thought through when I actually through, go through this process of stringing it back up. But uh, this is gonna be one absolutely beautiful bike for somebody just getting into road riding or if they're actually the next step up, actually. Um, you know, if you get into riding, like, oh, I really want something lighter, faster, better componentry, or somebody just starting into maybe entry-level racing, this is, this is awesome bike for that, for sure. Um, the seat post, it was not cut. It actually has its height limit line with the edge to it. Um, still going to tear apart the headset, but it seems to be pretty good. Just needs a little bit of spacer with that stem. Knowing that, it's going to be kind of a lower profile compact. This, this frame actually fits somebody um, fairly short. So it's, it, it might be a hit or a miss on who ends up getting this, but this is going to be awesome. Um, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get it all together and take it for a ride. The frame is super light and I'm really kind of excited to see what the total weight comes to on this as well. But yeah, I mean, I can't, I, I can't tell you how amazing this has been to clean up and fun and uh it's one of those things where you get excited in the shop when you're looking at something new with like durace or xtr or the higher end uh ceram you're like oh let's check this stuff out and you know give it a good look and that kind of thing and this is you know brings back those memories of looking at the old durace when it first came out or the carbon frames or the fancy suspensions which are so obsolete now but you know it's kind of kind of crazy just to think of all the things that have transpired over the years kind of working on this bike but this has a lot of the all or a lot of the same tech that is today and you're looking at like a three thousand two thousand dollar bike that's just mechanical um shifting uh, it's gonna blow the doors off of it i mean for sure absolutely and i'm gonna keep it within a appropriate pricing which is not going to be outrageous it's going to be a gem for somebody rock on so check out these final results after this so excited, so exciting, oh, so exciting. Ah. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy, and this is the... Oh, wait. What am I doing again? Oh, what is hiding now? Wait. Ah, oh, man, dang it. Sugar.